Hi and welcome everyone to our 97th episode of The Little Inside. Surprisingly, even after all those episodes, I'm still Toby. And this week I'm going to talk a little bit about guided meditation and mindfulness apps. So let's get started right after the intro. So nowadays there are surely a lot of mindfulness apps and guided meditation. You have all your bells and singing bowls and all the kind of things that remind you to be mindful and um, that guide you into meditation. There's so many guided meditations out there. It's a uh, it's a huge kind of um, a growth at the moment. Uh, you see many people adding more and more guided meditations, guided meditation for this, for that, for better sleep, for better relationships, for more success, for health and well-being, for spiritual realization. There's all these kind of um, guided meditations and apps that are supposed to help us on our spiritual path. So I've decided to dedicate this week's video to exploring um, if these are really helping us or if they might be an obstacle or uh, maybe both. So let's have a look. So the first thing I would like to have a look at is the benefits of guided meditation. Now we offer regular guided meditations here in Phuket. We have our free meditation class and we always start with a guided meditation. Um, I also have a few posts online. I'll post a link in the video description below. You can have a look at the guided meditations that we are offering on SoundCloud and as well as on YouTube. Um, you can try them for yourself. What are the benefits? So why would we do a guided meditation? I think the benefits of a guided meditation are that first of all, you learn the technique. You learn the structure of a certain technique. You learn what to do mentally. It's like your teacher is showing you exactly. So here's what you do when this and that happens. Here is how you direct your attention. Here's how you opening your awareness. Here's how you uh, focus in on something, etc. So the teacher basically gives you instructions. This is what happens to really everybody. If you go to a workplace, for example, if you go to an office, you first have to be introduced into how to work there in this office. If you have to learn carpentry, you have to be introduced on how to how to do that. And you have to have a master that shows you exactly how to do it. And they will guide you. The same is true for guided meditations. So that is the purpose of guided meditation. It guides you into the practice. It helps you explore it in a safe space. And it shows you all the important moves and, um, you know, uh, ways of directing your attention that are necessary for a beginner to learn. And what are the benefits of mindfulness apps? Well, it's similar, but mindfulness apps, most mindfulness apps, uh, they, they have some sort of bell that goes off every now and then, and you can adjust when they should go off randomly or every hour or every, every minute. <laughs> um, you can actually adjust that. And um, then this bell goes off on your phone. Uh, we all carry a phone with ourselves nowadays, and most people at least. And um, so it kind of reminds you to be mindful. So it reminds you to take a few deep conscious breaths, to get out of your head, to reconnect with your body, to reconnect with this moment, your life, to kind of slow down. So it's a very healthy thing to have. Actually, I would highly recommend you to work with those mindfulness apps. The benefits are that it introduces you, it wakes you up every now and then, it introduces mindfulness into your daily life. I also would like to cover the downfalls of guided meditation and downfalls of mindfulness apps as well, just to give a little bit of a balance. The problems with guided meditation is when it becomes some sort of crudge. It's almost like, you know, when you're a little uh, a little human being that first learns to ride a bicycle, then you need to have these kind of little two helper wheels by your sides. But then eventually these helper wheels, they are there to show you how to ride your bike and to get to have some faith, to build faith, to build trust in your ability to, to ride the bicycle. And then eventually they come off. I still remember when they came off for me for the first time, it was really, really, I was really nervous. I was very young. I think I was like four years old or something like this. And uh, then I had a friend who was living with me there and she, she just pushed me. Um, she just pushed me on that bike and I could make my first like 20 meters without helper wheels. And I felt so amazing to do my first um, excursion on the bike without helper wheels. 
So the same is true for meditation practice. You want to learn the technique, at least that's how we do it here at the Phuket Meditation Center. I'll show you how to do the technique, how to go through all the steps, how to build mental power, and then you want to do that eventually by yourself. See, mindfulness means something like recollection. It is. It means your ability to keep something in mind, to remember the breath, for example. Let's say you do breathing meditation. Mindfulness makes sure that you are keeping the breath in mind. The problem with the guided meditation here is that you will have some voice in your ear that is basically mindful for you. So it, it, the voice might say, And now direct your attention to the breath. So the voice kind of reminded you to do that. And many people become lazy internally. They don't really develop and cultivate mindfulness. They actually just rely on someone else telling them when to wake up. And so yes, that's why Guided meditations are really comfortable. Most people really enjoy them. They can completely surrender to the technique and relax. And that's probably a good function of guided meditation too. It helps you to relax, helps you to wind down. But you're not doing the real work actually. And that's the reason why I have a lot of people coming to our retreats and our classes who were all using apps like Headspace or doing guided meditations on YouTube online. And when they start to do their first meditation by themselves in their room, they all report the same. They say, it's really difficult. I had so many thoughts. It's so hard to stay focused. I'm much more comfortable when you are guiding me in the meditation. The reason for that is that when you are guided, basically someone else is doing the job for you. All you have to do is follow. So but in meditation practice, as we teach it, we do not want to cultivate followers, we want to cultivate people who are able to practice um, by themselves so that they actually cultivate the skill. Think of yourself going to the gym and actually um, doing the work in the gym. You have a, a guide first of all that shows you how to do push-ups and what they do is they lift you up and then they push you down, they correct everything in your posture and all that happens for the sake of you being able to support your own weight without your teacher carrying you, without your teacher having to guide you. And that supporting your own weight is what gives rise to you developing more muscle. So the same thing is true for meditation practice and guided meditation. The benefit is it introduces you into the technique, it shows you how to do it. The downfall is that we become overly dependent on it and we do not learn how to be mindful by ourselves, how to remind ourselves without a help, without a crutch, to come back to the breath. The downfall of mindfulness apps, well, that gives me something to think about. I don't really know what the downfall of mindfulness apps actually could be, but uh, I would suppose it's something similar as with the downfalls of guided meditation. Uh, you have your bell going off that makes you mindful, so you're connecting like the, the Pavlov uh, experiment with the dog and the bell. The dog would salivate when he hears the bell. He would connect the dog's um, perception of the bell with when the dog gets food. And so eventually, even ringing the bell would just be enough for the dog to salivate, to be ready to get the food. Um, so in a similar way, this works with the mindfulness bells apps. They They bring you into a space where you learn to connect the bell with being mindful. But here again, I would also recommend you to being able throughout the day to wake up by yourself without any crutch. It is even a higher skill, it is even better. Whereas I think the benefit of the Mindfulness Bells app is that it introduces more mindfulness into your daily life and it helps you to begin with the practice. The downfall is again, it makes you dependent on one particular input so you're kind of knocked out, unconscious for whenever there is no such input and you only wake up when there is that kind of input. So ideally you want to also learn to wake up beyond the mindfulness app so that you are able to just move through the day and all of a sudden you go, oh, oh, I should take a few mindful breaths just to relax, just to wind down or, oh, I'm taking a shower right now and I'm totally lost in my thoughts okay, I'm bringing my attention back to just feeling the water and being in the present moment. And that is without any bell, is by far more liberating and empowering actually. So the final question would be, how can we actually practice in a way that is 
balancing both of these uh, these approaches. Well, one, the first approach is to work with a crutch, with a helping force, like such as guided meditation or mindfulness apps or little notes that you write to yourself. That is one way, uh, particularly in the beginning, I really recommend you to use those things heavily to actually really familiarize yourself with the technique, to study, to learn, to practice, to remind yourself, to put up reminders, to make your phone work for you uh, in, in terms of mindfulness practice and so forth. And at the same time, I also recommend you to explore, even in the beginning stages, to explore how it feels like um, to do the practice just by yourself. So you have to remember the steps, you have to remember what to do, and you have to wake yourself up. Every now and then in your meditation practice, when you get lost in thought, you have to come out of it by yourself, by your own power, developing your own mindfulness. So maybe something that you could do is, you do a guided meditation in the morning, then you do a meditation, the same thing that you did in the morning, you do it in the evening, but without guidance. Then you do one day, with mindfulness app and one day without mindfulness app. So try to alternate so you're experiencing both states and you're experiencing the differences between both states clearly. So this is very empirical. It helps you to actually see for yourself without believing a video like mine right now. It helps you for yourself to see if there are any differences between you doing the guided meditation and between you doing the meditation, the same meditation without guidance. See if there are any differences. So this is all that comes to mind for this week um, about guided meditation and mindfulness apps and not using guided meditation, not using mindfulness apps. Uh, I hope it was helpful in some way and inspiring. If you do have any questions or if you observe something interesting uh, on your path as you're doing this, this practice for yourself, please let me know. Write it down in the comment section below. Always happy to read your comments. And uh, for now, I think that's it. I'm wishing all of you a wonderful next week and look forward to see you all again next Wednesday. Bye-bye.